all on. If y'all don't start commenting and sharing and subscribing, it's going to be me and y'all. Yeah. Stop playing with me. Comment. Hello, my fault. Go to the video. Hello. Bring some of that royalty. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Nick G, the host, and today I'm back with another reaction video. Before we go any further, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, or share this video. You dig what I'm saying and what the goddamn hell you league. So, <laughs> I'm back. You know what I'm saying? I've been gone for a minute, now I'm back with a jump off. Y'all know how to take care of the event or whatever. Uh, we had to actually cancel the party portion of it, but, you know, we went out, mobbed out Atlanta with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Went on dates with some. Had the uh, dinner with some, you know what I'm saying? Did a reaction, you know, with somebody, with, with my nigga KD. So, yeah, we had a great time, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate all y'all that came out, that understood times are hard. It's going down, okay? Um, and I appreciate y'all. So, in the meantime, in between time, nothing has changed, though. I still need y'all to continue to subscribe to this channel. I still need y'all to continue to like these videos. You dig what I'm saying? And if you want me to react to your video, well, just DM me. Nothing is free. However, I will make sure I turn your video up. You dig what I'm saying? And I make sure I put it right in your budget. All right. Now, I love y'all, man. It's time to get back into these vibes. You dig? Let's go. We're doing three videos over here, three videos on Royce's World, three videos on, uh, two videos on my mukbang channel. It's about to be a vibe. I need y'all to spam, spam, spam me what videos y'all want me to react to, man. And, um, we about to get into this first one now. Apparently, Easy and Natalie did a podcast. Easy. Hold on now. Easy and Nat podcast or something like that uh um -huh. here we go thrill and excitement oh it's 41 minutes all right so that's what we about to get into you dig um i don't know what's going on it don't necessarily be none of my business but we about to get into it um yeah I don't know if I, I, I feel like I am zoomed in and that's why y'all can see me so close. So close and personal. I kind of like it. We're going to keep it. Let's get into it. It is gone mm -hmm. because that passion phase is really based on the unknown. Intimacy is just not there and it's affecting us. If there's a good amount of time that has gone by, like we should be able to have sex. I'm not going to continue to feel like I'm not being heard in this relationship. It's not just about venting, it's about communicating. Why does someone get upset that I'm upset? That's what I feel like calling each other names, like those type of things are not necessary if you're really trying to communicate with your partner. And there's really good news and then there's really bad news here. Stop idolizing YouTube couples. We go through shit. Please be respectful as we continue to share our journey with y'all. Period. Oh, let me like this video and let me put in the comments. Y'all got this, man. Always hit enter, child. Boom. I did my due diligence. Did you do it for me yet? Did you do it for me yet? Did you? Like this video, bruh. Comment. Nah. What's up? Gang, 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 gang. Okay, y'all. We out here. It's a little construction going on, but we're happy to be back on our channel. Yes. Welcome back, guys. Welcome yes. back. If you guys missed us, we missed you. Yes. If you um, miss, if you didn't miss us, then we still, we missed, still you. missed you. Yes. Um, guys, um, we've been a little absent from YouTube lately, and uh, our personal lives need a little bit of attention. And I feel like. You know, because we're so honest with you guys, we're going to let you guys know what's going on today. Yeah, we decided to take a little hiatus. A little hiatus. Focus on the relationship a little bit because mm -hmm. it was suffering. Yeah, it was suffering. Um, and we want to be honest, we've been taking therapy, guys. We've been doing therapy, and uh, with that therapy, it is, it's been helping a lot. It has been, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like 
it wasn't enough. The, at least what, the route that we were taking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're here today with our friend Shan. You mm-hmm. guys don't know who Shan is. Shan is a beautiful. A sexologist. We'll let her introduce yes. herself. Yeah. Yes. So we're here and we're going to get some advice, relationship advice, couple advice. Um, and just maybe that she can help us out with some of the things that we're going through. So maybe you guys will take something away from it for your relationships too. Yeah. Let's yeah. get it popping. You guys ready? If you're new to this channel, make sure you guys subscribe. If you're not new and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And turn those post notifications on so you know when we post. Please. Hey. This is actually a time where I don't feel like they're faking. They do not look happy right now. Hey. Yo, this setup is fire. Yeah, we don't hug. It is. Yeah, we, oh, we can hug. Okay. <laughs> we, can <definitely laughs> hug. we can definitely hug. You look beautiful. Wow. Thank you yeah. so much. This is so cool. This whole setup is fire. Mm. Yo, the plants. Yeah. I'm loving it. Are you flirting so I'll take your side in this discussion? <laughs> I think is that so. the strategy? I think that's what it is. <laughs> I think that's what it is. That's not what it is. First it's foremost, working. She's toxic. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what I need. Yeah. Come on. Okay, you know, I was a little bit scared because I honestly feel like just because they they are very similar in looks, like, you know, very, very, have very much similarities in their face, you know? So I was like, she's definitely gonna side with her and it's just the eyes. So I was like, I was scared. But since you said that, I know where this is going. Safe space. Safe space. All right, we're here. Hi. We're here. Yeah. Hello. We're here. I know we're all excited now, but you might get like, <laughs> A little serious. A little serious. Um, a little no. serious is good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for trusting me to listen in on this conversation. I'm really yeah. honored by that. Of course. I lo- well, let's start like this. Why don't you introduce? But one, let's just start. <laughs> Hello. To yourself yes. so they know, you know exactly what you do and stuff. That's a good uh, mic stand she got. The setup is amazing. Hi, I'm Shan Boudram. I look a lot like Natalie, but we are different people. <laughs> and we're not even related, <laughs> yeah. funny enough. Uh, I talk about sex, love, and relationships for a living. I am a fan. I am a student. I am an educator. I have an educational background in psychology, sexology, and journalism, which I think just makes me professionally curious in yeah. this area. But to me, it was basically came out of a place of this is one area in our life that is so important, mm-hmm. but we invest so little time in learning, practicing, and becoming masters of because we assume that if it's right, it'll yeah. just come natural. Right. And it just wasn't coming natural to me. <laughs> um, so I invested a lot of time in education and thought to myself, wow, a lot of other people could benefit from this this kind of information and knowledge too. Yeah. So I made it my mission to make information about sex, love, and relationships accessible. Yeah. Um, to wow. make sex education sexy. And that's what brought me here to you guys today. Cause I talk Sheesh. about this online or I talk about it wherever I possibly can. And again, like I said, I'm thrilled to talk to you. Yeah, no, wow. we're really excited about it too. And this, yes, ladies and gents, is why we decided to come talk to her about it. Because she does we know this shit. She does this. Yes. She has a lot of knowledge on it. And like we, you know, expressed to you guys, yeah. our relationship has, you know, it's been suffering a little bit. Especially recently. in that area. So, yeah, let's get into it. Well, I yeah. do want to clarify and just say that. I wish I could speak. I know. I ain't got to nothing yet. Like, let's talk. And I will provide insight where I can. But really, I think the best thing that I can do is just be here to be another person to be like what about this what about all right friend and in that you know i feel like our uh, <laughs> yeah right. we need help we need help um you know i feel like our relationship has been suffering and in that way i mean a romance you know our romantic life has been suffering um we used to be very romantic in the beginning and it was just so much spark so much fire and now it's work 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 and that intimacy is just not there and it's affecting us even the way we work the way we talk to each other and the way we handle each other mm-hmm. is just it needs a lot of attention and we need to seek help whether it's trying to switch it up understanding each other's love languages or whatever but it's just not it right now yeah and i think yeah. we're the good thing is that we're both very curious as to why it's not working and we're both willing to shit i know why first of all i feel like we all have gone through this but like when me and tt first got together we was we did it every day probably all day for like a year and a half but in the beginning i was trying to get my life together she was trying to get her life together she had just left her last relationship i had just left mine and not only that i took a break from youtube i wasn't really focused on work 
I had work that I was, you always got to make money. <clears throat> but the work that I was doing, it was fitness. She was involved in it. I was involved in it. You work out more. You, you know, you naturally want to do it more. And if you have <clears throat> time, then you have more time to do it. You get what I'm saying? And um, after that, and we became busy, and then we had more bills, and then we had to do, you know, more more things. We could not have sex like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it got to the point where it was like, you know, I, I'll talk about it more while they talk about it. Go and seek help we any through way it. possible. Like we, you know, we, we've been trying therapy, like talking to you who mm -hmm. have a lot of education in this field. So, yeah. yeah. So how are you feeling the exact same way that Easy's feeling in terms of that mojo, that sauce? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that mojo and sauce is definitely, you know, lacking. A little more mild. Yeah, it's a little mild. It, wasn't, it was very spicy before. Hey. Now it's a little mild. Um, and I think that we have some communication issues on my end. I feel like a big thing is like communication and how we get along in our day to day. That <clears> really <throat> does probably affect our um our romance because if you're to me if we're not like mentally on the same page we're not getting along as much and stuff like that it's not gonna make me feel that like it's hard for me to just let that go if i feel like we were just arguing now i don't really want to come over and be all on you and be kissing you and stuff like that that's not how like my so me and tt just beat that too however <clears throat> we had to give each other space like all right bro i'm pissed you pissed go on about your business i'm gonna go and buy mine and we really have to, like, <laughs> with us, we either got to sleep on it or, like, give me a minute. Give me 20, 30, maybe an hour or two. Give me a second. I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? That's what we had to do. Brain works. Hmm. Interesting. What's interesting What's about interesting? That? I feel like I'm that way. You she know, is. I'm very much that way when it comes to intimacy. Like, especially because being a woman, I feel like, like with like at least from the the guy friends that I have, even if him them him and his partner are arguing or friends, they're arguing with their woman. It's like they could still have that sex. You know what I'm saying? Me, for arguing, I don't want to have it. Like you know, it's not turning me on. You feel me? But Facts. she complains. I about think that's that. a woman. You thing. know, like oh, I feel like I'm not wanted. I feel like you don't want me enough. But it's just like well, we're just arguing. Or when I do give it to you, or when we do have sex, you're you want to argue right after. Where it's just like, I'm the type of person, I'm like, yo, if we having sex, especially if it's been a long time, I'm expecting us not to argue. You know what I'm saying? It's not that I wanted to treat it like it's a reward, but it's like, dang, remember those times we just have sex and it just feels so good after? Actually, you know what? No, we don't remember. <laughs> Y'all keep everything so damn PG. We ain't know what the hell was going on. Never even thought y'all was having sex. Damn. Maybe if y'all shared it with us more, you'd be more active. <laughs> y'all hate the PG. I hate it. Why the fuck are PG. we arguing? Mm -hmm. You know? What's the answer to that question? What is like the root of the con? I'm easy watching. She's like, bitch, because it ain't your business. <laughs> she With some reaction video, she get real aggravated if you um coming at her any type of way. But I just want to say it's no disrespect. I have um humor in this because I've gone through it as well. So, I mean, you know, hopefully nobody gets offended. <clears throat> Y'all do keep it PG as fuck, though. Conflicts, like, where's that stemming from repeatedly? Um, I ahead. think a lack of communication, yeah. honestly, and, like, not really knowing. I think comfortability. Let me just say that. I think the main issue we have in this relationship is comfortability because I feel like the way that, you know, from speaking on my end specifically, I feel like the way, you know, that sometimes you'll be comfortable in talking to me or just like getting so easily frustrated or the lack of trying to court me still, that affects us so much. You know, mm -hmm. it affects me so much. I wouldn't say us because I'm going to speak for myself to the point where it's like, all right, well, where is there room for romance when I feel like and just a one thing about a Sagittarius out of all of the Sagittarius I have met, nothing changes. They like sex. Point blank, period. You know what I'm saying? I have not met one Sagittarius friend wise, smashing wise. Who ain't saying, bro, I'm horny as hell, bro. And if I don't get no pussy right now, I'm trying to tell you, boy, it's going to be a problem. Or if I don't get no D right now, it's about to be a problem. Like, they are sexually, like, Clarence and Queen do it all the time. 
Clarence is a damn Sagittarius. Queen just naturally horny as hell anyway. But Clarence is a Sagittarius. Like he, they have to do it. You know what I'm saying? And that, if you can't keep up, it's an issue with them. They don't like that shit, bro normal conversation something that should never lead to an argument is going to lead to an argument because of the way that it's said or the comfortability of like getting so easily frustrated you know so i feel like that's like a huge thing for me it's difficult for you to go from conflict to sex yeah what is the conflict the conflict i think is just i'll get too comfortable with her and like she was pretty much saying and it's just like why are you upset about that? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like with her, what she does is she, it's like almost kind of like the same, but in different ways. She she argues a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like her always having a response to something is just like not, I'm like not stimulating me mentally, you know mm. what I'm saying? Which is also, Wait, what? In, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like her always having a response to something she does is she, it's like almost kind of like the same, but in different ways. She she argues a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like her always having a response to something is just like, I'm like not stimulating me mentally, you know what I'm saying? Which okay, so basically easy don't like the arguing. I ain't gonna lie, I don't either. Like, now I can't say, sit here and say, I'm not the type to be like, yo, can you just like <laughs> do what I said and just like, just do what I said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, our women are not like that. Now, it is some women that'll be like, all right, fine. Because, girl, I don't feel like dealing with it either way. <clears throat> you got to have a median in that, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? If you have a woman who keep, like, granted, y'all have y'all opinions. But if somebody keep dragging it, it's like, fuck, we're not going to ever get over this. And sometimes I could do it. Sometimes TT can do it. But at some point, like, you got to kind of end it. It's like, all right, somebody got to end it. Somebody always has to be the mature person. And that's what I always complain about because I don't feel like being a mature person all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we have had to work on it because I want our relationship to work. And I do love them. And honestly, the single life out here is very ugly. Don't nobody want that shit? Just also so I'm willing in, to work internally on <laughs> like affecting my romance in you know, that type of way. You know, So I don't know if that answers the question. I think so. I okay. mean, I think what I hear in summary is that the fact that you guys are not communicating with each other in loving ways or in yeah. ways that make you feel loved or desired by each other all day long is impacting you in terms of the passion and the sexual desire in the relationship, which also causes frustration, which makes the other problems compound. Exactly. Because now you go to the next day being sexually frustrated in addition to being like, I don't like how you spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So it feels yeah, like it's everything a comes together. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that we do, just to kind of touch on something that you said earlier, I think we do share like very similar um, like viewpoints on like, okay, if we're not getting along, we're not really sexually like mm -hmm. attracted to each other or we're not in that mode. But for me, I think like, I'll, I, I can get over things a little bit faster than she can. So if we argue in the morning and then now it's later in the evening and we've been getting along, having lots of laughs and stuff like that, like I'm okay with like, to me that was in the morning. I'm okay with like us being sexual now, but she'll say things like, well, we haven't even getting along and stuff like that. And then like, sometimes I will feel like, well, dang, it's not a reward, you know, like how she said, well, it's not, you know, she's like, I don't look at it like a reward, but sometimes it feels like it's being treated as one. If like, I don't think, of course, I'm not, I'm not the type of person that wants to have sex like in the moment of arguing and some people are like that. But I feel like if there's a good amount of time that has gone by, like we should be able to have sex, like still be romantic if we've been getting along for the past like five hours. Right. But I guess this isn't something that you can put a we label on. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not that simple. And it's because, like, you can be the most beautiful woman in the world, dog. And when you just argumentative and don't, I'm not in their business. I don't know nothing about their lifestyle. I don't know nothing about their life. I don't know who argue, arguing first. I'm just saying. If, if Natalie argue all the time, it's ugly. If Easy argue all the time, it's ugly. That is just an ugly trait to me. Like, ain't no way in hell you want to argue all the time 
all day long. I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to do that at all. Okay. <laughs> so don't do that with me. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. Hold on. Let me uh, cut this camera on and cut it back off. Cause I feel like my words are not. Yeah, they are. Um, it's just an ugly thing and you get turned off. You could think she the most beautiful person in the world. And then when it's time to do it and we was just arguing and then we was arguing yesterday, arguing the day before girl, I don't feel like doing it to you <laughs> For real. because you might feel uh -uh. that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And also too, that's a lesbian thing. Cause men that turns them on. That's the difference with lesbians and men. Also men are more so the ones who initiate. <clears throat> Some women have said, they man don't initiate because I've asked because in the beginning TT wasn't initiating. And um, then we worked on that because women like initiators because we're still women. You know, it's just a lot. It's fun at first because, you know, this head is amazing. And we can make sure you go round for round for round, pound for pound, and you coming and you coming and you coming. But it's still a lot of shit that go on. Resolution sometimes you could feel resolved. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's because easy apologize to you mm -hmm. but in return maybe she doesn't feel resolved and so what you mm -hmm. could move on about because you're like we talking about we ended it for you maybe it, it didn't end yeah yeah that yeah. could be the case that is the case a lot of the time or do you feel like you're the kind of person who just stays in a stank mood for a long period of time <laughs> no i think that um i can i hold, used to be not a grudge but it's just like if i'm affected in a big way you know what i'm saying it's not that we just argued about freaking who can choose what food it is it's like uh, argument sometimes where it's like, yo, like this is could be detrimental to our relationship. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna just get over that, you know, or things my feelings being yeah. ignored. I'm not going to continue to feel like I'm not being heard in this relationship. And because I feel that way, and you're not catering catering to that feeling, it's like, how am I going to be sexually like, or how, how am I supposed to, to be sexual right now? Or you know what I'm saying? Or try to have sex, you know? So I'm not in that mode when I feel like you don't cater to my feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. I I, there's a couple of quizzes that I want to suggest right now that I think what first of all foremost let me just frame this discussion by saying there's really good news and then there's really bad news here okay the really good news is that this is so common that yeah. when we get to a place in a relationship especially multi-hyphenate relationships friends business partners lovers homies dog walkers for each mm -hmm. other you do everything together right. right we can start out with high passion but eventually that passion turns more into a companionship. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal of love in general. You wanna mm -hmm. get to a place where you are now locked in, that's where commitment takes place. But there's a trade-off that happens in that balance because now I know you so well and I can rely on you so much that thrill and excitement is gone mm -hmm. because that passion phase is really based on the unknown. Yeah. Right? The more you get to know someone, the less that you don't know, so the less that there is that sort of adrenaline rush when that person walks around. So yeah. that's the good and the bad news is that you've now moved into a stage of your relationship where right. you have a deeper level of commitment. You have more responsibilities together. You have to rely on each other for a lot more. And that's amazing. Yeah. But the downside is, is that the passion doesn't become this. Nigga gotta be like getting the trash right now. <laughs> that would have pissed me off. <laughs> Certain shit that pissed me off don't piss nobody else off. I'd be like, did you hear that? Nigga be like, no. You don't hear that whole trash can right now fucking with our volume all right automatic thing anymore did become something that you have to intentionally work for mm -hmm. do yeah. you feel like you've made that adjustment to I know now hate it, intentionally me. working to create that passion rather than just expecting it to be there <laughs> i feel like say that again do yeah. you feel like you've made that adjustment to now intentionally working to create that passion rather than just expecting it to be there so that was the next thing for me and tt it's like all right, I know what we was doing in the beginning, but you cannot just expect that to be that every time. Like now, you know, it's time to create the fire. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what you have to do. You have to re-spark each other from time to time. Surprise her when she get home. Like, hey, listen, I got a bubble bath ran for you. Dig what I'm saying? Um, and also with people who work, like if, if I can work 24 hours a day, I know she be on like 48 hour time. So it's like, listen, you got to cut off all work for the day, for the rest of the day. That's what I'm doing today when TT get home and bust her brains out. But I got to make sure I cut all my work off. My work got to be done by the time she gets to the crib. So I'm going to be ready to do it, what it is I need to do. You know what I'm saying? To make sure she is pleased. Today, I don't necessarily have to be pleased. You know what I'm saying? So 
that too. It's just, I don't know. We all different. <laughs> I feel like um, in a lot of ways, we just kind of expect it to be yeah. there. I don't think that we've put in adequate work towards keeping Absolutely. that passion alive. I think that some other issues that we have in our relationship, like mm-hmm. our things that we like to consider like our non-negotiables, um, where it's like, okay, I need this in a partner and she needs this in a partner. I think those things we have like put in a lot of work towards where it we it just kind of is a cycle like it'll get better for a while and then the same topic continues to come up but i definitely feel like we could put more effort towards like keeping the passion of romance alive it's just a little bit hard to do that when we're having a hard time getting along because of those Mm non-negotiables yeah yeah and i think that we don't intentionally all of the things that we already are going through it's like it's hard when you're just working you know what i'm saying you're just working you're not catering to the relationship you're not catering to even yourself you know what i'm saying so when it comes to like intentionally putting in that sexual effort and complimenting each other and stuff like that we just don't do it Mm -hmm. enough and as we are here you can see that you know what i'm saying so if we broke this down to kind of like three different buckets bucket one is just general communication that makes me feel disrespected or unloved How can she right. sit like and that all the time? obviously you respect each other and you love each other so right. the great news is that all you got to do here is be mindful of what triggers your partner and avoid that language mm-hmm. so when you say you know wheezy gets frustrated with you really easily what are some of the languages or things that she does that you're like hey it would mean a lot to me if you, mm-hmm. even though you're comfortable with me, instead of just coming to me automatically and correcting me or giving me that tone, I would actually appreciate if you gave me more grace and patience in these areas. Mm-hmm. Your grace and mercy. Hold on, y'all. I always got to mess with something. Okay, we're done. Much oh, like tone sensitive. I don't really want people to talk to me with an attitude, let alone yell at me. You know, I've been like that since I was little. Like I would get if my mom would yell at me or a teacher would yell at me, I'd start crying immediately. Like I just I don't like that. And I think that's kind of like she'll call it passion when she's speaking to me. And sometimes I'm like, I just don't I shut down, like I don't respond well. So it is a passion thing. That's another issue me and TT had. She she speaks passionately, I speak passionately. And she's a Leo, I'm a Leo. So she get loud, I get loud. You know what I'm saying? And some people just not loud. Some people, you have loud and then you have passive aggressive. And I dislike passive aggressive way more than loud. Like I'd rather you yell at me than be passive aggressive. I hate passive aggressive, Pass, well, passive to, aggression. Like anybody raising their voice at me or coming at me with like a certain tone, that would be something that I'd appreciate if you didn't do. Or like even like cussing when we're upset, like I would like for us to practice not doing that, like not cussing at each other or, you know, being super offensive, like calling each other names, like those type of things. Like I feel are not necessary if you're really trying to communicate with your partner and not just like be offensive i would love because we're not going to accomplish and again we're not in a therapy session here and we're covering a lot in a short space of time i but feel like what I we're feel try- like i messed up the blur and shit i feel like i messed it up i didn't like leave it alone <laughs> i just accomplish is like what are the areas and the potential for growth the opportunities for growth and that's an opportunity for growth right there so right. i just want to know because you can't fix this in a day it could take years to curb those things because Facts. obviously that reaction those emotional reactions might be learned behavior from childhood even mm-hmm. um so that's work that you have to dedicate to doing up by yourself so i would just love if in this moment you could reflect back to natalie what you just heard yeah and what your intentions are given what she just said Um, You know, my intentions are never to make you feel like I'm attacking you. You know what I'm saying? So like when I am speaking passionately and I'm feeling some heightened emotions, I know it can come off aggressive and I want to cater to you being tone sensitive and stuff like that. So, you know, I want to make sure that I'm being aware of the way that I'm speaking to you so you don't feel like, all right, I just don't care about your feelings or I'm being angry or aggressive. You know what I'm saying? And just cater into that emotion. So you know that I actually care, you know, and I'm actually taking what you're saying into consideration and wanting to do better for this relationship. That way we can get to moments to, even if we are arguing, 
it can be like, wow, she's being very sweet and it can even turn somewhat sexual, you know? Mm -hmm. I think in order for change to happen, you have to change more than just your mind. Yeah. Right, like that's anything else in life. I can't just decide like I wanna get in better shape today. I've gotta change lifestyle, I gotta change habits, I gotta put yeah, a plan action. in action to follow through with that. Yeah. yeah. So if, cause the har one of the harder things to change is the way that we react when we're emotionally triggered. Mm -hmm. Because we go into fight or flight and that's a very automatic system. Yeah. So in order to ensure that you don't snap at your partner, what other changes are you willing to make to make good on the promise you just made verbally? I think um, other changes that I can make is just, I think meditating more, you know what I'm saying? Like to keep that calmness and awareness is something that I like to do is um, mirror practices, you know what I'm saying? And those things help me be way more calm, of, a, a way more calm person, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie, sometimes I feel like he's just gotta smoke a blunt. And I go lie, sometimes I feel like I, I, I wish I could smoke a blunt too. Um, hell, she probably do smoke a blunt, still don't be calm. Some of us is just not calm. <laughs> okay. I'm one of those uh not calm people. I'm calm. how about this? I'm really calm when I'm not around other energies. When I'm not around other energies, I am a, a more calm person than being around a lot of people. I don't know why that is. I really don't. Um, I've tried to figure out, figure it out, and it's just a hard thing to figure out. <laughs> like I just am not a calm person. You know what I'm saying? And it just kind of is what it is. But, um, and I'm definitely not calm around energies. And and a lot of times, like now, I used to be open to friendships and open to getting to know people and things like that. And that's so shut off now. It's so shut off. I just. I don't want to do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't understand you, you know? And um, I'm just, I'm, I'm good on that. But also I love my calmness when I'm not around different energies. So let me know in the comments if y'all, when y'all are around different energies, you know what I'm saying? How do you feel? Does it make you feel um, a little crazy or a little like, ah, you know what I'm saying? That like happen? to you, you know, and making that action. So I hopefully does that answer the question or? Yeah. Is, is therapy uh, something that you engage in alone or have thought of engaging alone? If anger outbursts are something that you're like, oh, I do that. And I don't like that. I do that. Yeah, I've tried it. And I think it was very beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just feel like, I don't know, it's just with therapists are just like, it's like they don't get there. You know, they don't give you what. But they're also just a regular human, so they can't give you all of the answers. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You gotta do the work yourself too. So I think it's helped so much, and I've I've changed so much drastically. So a lot of things that she has say, um, said and mentioned, I've changed drastically. Therapy could could help, but I feel like it's not that big enough to where it's like, all right, I could do this with her. The therapy sessions together, you know. And you feel like meditation is that solo practice you can do yeah. by yourself. There's m things that within your own mm -hmm. control. Yeah. And that's actually really helpful. Yeah. Does that feel like a satisfactory plan to you? Yeah. I feel like if it is something that like you actually, you know, stick to and can be like, um, like consistent with, I think it would actually really help. Cause I have noticed like mm -hmm. when you are taking more time for yourself, like, emotionally and mentally and just like creating like a peaceful space for yourself yeah i've noticed like it makes a big difference in how you react to things and interact that too a lot of times we do need our own space that was another problem with me and tt we needed our own space so we're people that can actually be alone and be like nigga fuck all y'all <laughs> you know what i'm saying but um we still gotta love each other so you know sometimes you just need that space act with me yeah definitely <laughs> let's talk about you <laughs> she let's can't talk. wait she's let's talk. Like, okay now uh what are you gonna do <laughs> well yeah i'm waiting for yeah. shan to ask well, you well on the flip side easy also identified that there's ways that you communicate with her that light her fire mm -hmm. that are can feel combative or argumentative that create that need for her to feel like she has to raise her voice to you mm -hmm. so are you Passive aware aggressive. when you heard her say that did that feel like that was truth to you are you aware of that that I can be argumentative sometimes. Yeah, I definitely. Sagittarius are passive aggressive. Okay. They don't have to yell. It's just more so like a, hmm. <laughs> like a, I, I can't explain it, but 
It'll piss you off. Be ready to knock somebody out. You would out. say, I can agree <laughs> that I can be argumentative. Well, I want to just, I don't want to put words in your mouth. If you were to kind of re-express for okay. you, like what's the thing in your day-to-day communication that you're like, I kind of want to see this change. Yeah. Um, I feel like something that I complain about the most in this relationship is my feelings being heard. I think that with her, I have to be gentle and the things that she says, like, it's not that it's like a never. So when she's like, all right, be soft, be this, be that. I'm like, okay, I can do those things. But when it comes to my needs and my feelings and being heard, they aren't reciprocated. There's always a but. There's always a because. Mm-hmm. There's always, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it, doesn't, it feels like my feelings are being belittled 90% of the time in this relationship to where it's just like, dang, like every time she expresses herself and what she feels, a lot of times it can be an argument, but a lot of times it's like, okay, I hear you. I feel like majority of the times I express my feelings, it always ends up in an argument. You know what I'm saying? And that sucks to feel like, dang, all right, how should I express myself and my feelings in this relationship without it getting into an argument, even though it's me expressing myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's where it typically goes. How is it that you're upset about, you're arguing with me about what I feel, you know? Instead of just, not justifying, but, but understanding and catering to that feeling, you know? And that is a huge, huge reason why, like, this part of our relationship affects me romantically. Mm. I want to go into, I want to gloss over that, and then I want you to get more specific. Because I think what Natalie did for you just now is gave you something very tangible and actionable that you can work on. Okay. Which is good and helpful. But you're saying, when I give you things to work on, the way that you respond doesn't give me confidence that I can be honest with you. Yeah. But I also kind of want to know what specifically is something that you're like. Yeah. When I say this is what I want to yeah. focus on. But I have a rule of thumb when it comes to that because it's very difficult to answer your question. Like, why does someone get upset that I'm upset? Mm-hmm. Because we're going to fight or flight. You know, that person attacks you and then all of a sudden now your defenses are up. You're eager. If you get an attitude with me and I ain't did nothing to you, oh, baby, you ain't going to like me. <laughs> Like, you thought you was pissed. Oh, you have absolutely pissed me all the way off. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times I have to ask, like, why are you even mad? Like, what happened? You know? And sometimes you just, you never know what a person's going through mentally. So that's why you have to communicate with your partner. And then when you're trying to do that, if they just not acceptable to it or or, uh, can explain what's wrong with them. You know, and and maybe nothing is wrong with them. You just not feeling the vibe. That is something that we have an issue with because it just be like, well, we'll find out what it is the next day. But in that moment, uh uh-uh. Ego is up. Like, you're no longer responding from a place of rationale. Like, you're in protective mode. Um, I think a good thing to be mindful of is when that happens for you to be like, okay, right now I'm defensive when my person needs me to be receptive. Yep. And I use the analogy of... Imagine, Natalie, you're home and you're inside, you're watching your favorite TV show, right? And Natalie comes in and she is soaking wet. And she's like, where were you? Like, where have you been? You're supposed to pick me up. I was outside in the rain, now I'm soaking wet. You're mad because she came in really aggressive, but also she's the one who's wet right now. Mm -hmm. She's the one who's disappointed. So your first priority has to be like, let's get you in dry clothes let me apologize to you because you're the person who's like really been impacted right now and then after you're dry and you're settled and you're calm now i can come to you and say hey i know that i let you down disappointed you and there was a miscommunication but the way you brought it to me was hurtful Mm -hmm. and i think that that in mind sometimes whenever whoever comes with the problem first see that person as the person who's been outside cold wet and irritated and even though the way that they brought it to you may not be the most comfortable way just Get that person dry and warm first, and then you can bring your thing in. Mm. Wow. That was the best example I've heard in a really long time. (laughs) And it was a great example of how she deals with things. And I'm like, not trying to be funny. Like, that really touched the spot. Mm. And I was like, dang, that's what I feel like coming in wet all the time. And it's just like, well, why are you mad? Wait, why are you yelling? You know what I'm saying? Well, damn, I'm out here soaking wet. Like, that's so crazy you said that. I almost got emotional. Yeah, my mine is always like I go through enough outside. Do not bring this in my house, bro. I go through enough outside. I don't want to deal with that shit in my house. And some of y'all might say, I mean, you can't help what you deal with. Yes, the fuck you can. <laughs> it it just takes action. It takes you know consideration. Like I already deal with people outside. You know what I'm saying? So I need love in here. 
I need love. I need light. I need affection in here. You know what I'm saying? Period. That's how I and feel. That's a non-negotiable for me in my house. Because I ain't stressing you out. Hell no. That's a hard thing to put into practice, though, because human Especially nature, in the house. Yeah. when somebody says something to us, I'd be in a corner, mind my like attack yeah. or natural response. This corner. So we can <laughs> remind each other this analogy in that moment to get and give that person some space to switch over yeah. into a common connect mode. But that's just a tool for you guys to use. And if you both can subscribe to it, it can be really powerful for relationships. Anyways, but going back to her getting something specific, right. she gave you something specific. What's one thing that you're like, I'd like you to work on this and working on this would allow us to get a lot more peace out of our relationship. It's just like that per that example just gave exactly what I mean. Like whenever I'm coming to you with an issue about anything, I tiptoe about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you're sensitive. So whenever I come to you with an issue, I want to feel like you're going to be receptive en enough to be like, oh, okay, I hear your issue, but not say, okay, I hear your issue, but this is that. I just want you to be receptive and be like, you know what? Wow, I didn't know you had this issue with me. Or wow, dang, like now I could see it like that. Or dang, I didn't know this was affecting you. You know, um, I want to work on that. Or you know what I'm saying? I just feel like there's always an if, and, or but, and because, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you can do that every time, or at least try to do that whenever I come to you with an issue, it, it will make me feel like my feelings are being acknowledged. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Without always arguing you know what i'm saying because even when i'm not coming off aggressively we still end up arguing even if it's a sweet way you yeah. know what i'm saying because it's about you make it about you i feel mm -hmm. like you make it about you instead of the overall bigger picture mm -hmm. because it's like okay well what am i feeling right now that's not true what to, about if this me? is natalie you're, you're being receptive is what i i feel like i feel like well that's not true to me well that's not what i feel well since you tell me what you feel let me make it about what i feel what i've been feeling you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that specific enough for you? I guess, yeah. I feel like it's kind of still a little broad, but like it's not like behavioral things I can specifically like pinpoint. Like, well, yeah, oh, then, I remember when I've done this, but yeah, I, I feel like I can definitely take in what you're saying. You're just saying like be more like open to hearing you out and receptive, and being care about how I feel. Me and Titi had that issue too, <laughs> but I honestly think it's because coming from men. And, you know, I've been wanting, I've been kind of wanting to touch on men because I can't if I'm clearly not a man or I need to speak to a man. But a lot of times I feel like women don't give a damn about how they man feel. And I, I have to say that's a terrible feeling. You know what I'm saying? Because when it's done to us, it'd be like, damn, like you, you really don't care. Because naturally you think a masculine person can just suck it up. Like, man, I'm good. Like you, you think that's how that happens. And that is not how that happens. Sometimes you need a conversation. Sometimes you need a hug, nigga. Sometimes you need some love. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me get some of that. Not just always rah, rah, rah. You know what I'm saying? It's not cool. Receptive to you when you like have it. an issue with something. <laughs> yeah. And just the, but all that ties into how argumentative you are and, you know, your personality and how you are is like very strong. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it comes, it shows, and you know that about yourself. So just being a little bit more passionate and soft, you know, because at the end of the day, yeah, I know you're used to dealing with guys and you, you vocalize like, dang, a guy would never do that. But Bam. It's just like, I am Bam. We went through that for so long. She was like, I mean, uh, I, dealing with guys, I had never even been told that about myself. So I don't even recognize what you talking about. And it's like, bro, how? <laughs> Maybe because guys don't care. But really, they do. What y'all don't see is that a guy be going through some shit after he left y'all or whatever, you know, he went to a bar or whatever, come talking to my ass. And he like, man, you know, you know, it's just like, just listen to what a nigga saying, you know what I'm saying? Just act like you care, you know, something. I I don't know what it is about that shell with women and, and men or women and a person that's masculine, like to, to, to act as if you care about what a nigga talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm a woman. Same thing that you want is kind of like what I want, that soft, sweet, and receptiveness, you know? Yes. Is defensiveness a good word to utilize here? That she's defensive? Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So if that's kind of an actual that point too. of having a defensive personality, because when we're defensive, it's difficult to be empathetic mm -hmm. um, yes. and be sympathetic. That so makes sense. for you, <laughs> when you hear that, is that something that you acknowledge and want to work on? And if so, what can you offer easy to say like this is something that i 
do want to fix for you. Yeah, I feel like I could definitely see how, you know, being defensive of a situation regardless of the reasons that why I become defensive about certain things. I can see how that doesn't feel compassionate to you or doesn't make you feel like heard. And like going back to Shan's like example of like, all right, well, you're cold, caught in the rain. So let's talk about that first. I think that that's a great like way to look at things because I do find like I can think of specific examples where times like that have happened where that wasn't my first intention was to like make sure you're good first and dry and warm because I felt like, you know, whatever the reason might be, it's not my intentions wouldn't be like, oh, let me make sure you're warm and stuff. But that could probably help diffuse the situation a lot faster. Um, I do think, though, one part of what she said is like something really good for us both to take in and that is like eventually you can bring up like hey now that you're dry and warm like let's not d- handle things in this specific way because i know that times where i've done that you'll say i've made it about me now where truck get the fuck man you know what i'm saying it's like even in the conversation if i did Only try I to hit cater to you cater to you cater to you then i'm like towards the end like oh but you know babe like the way that you 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 know you said this i felt like that was really nasty towards me or whatever the case may be i'd rather you not oh now you're making it about you like i feel like any conversation we should both be open to hearing each other out or even if you're the one that brought it up you should still be able to hear something that they said in the conversation because it's not just about venting it's about communicating you know overall i definitely could say that like i can see how verbally making sure that you know that i'm hearing you and that i care can make the world a difference in a conversation between us when you're bringing something to my attention there's actually this quiz I want you guys to do. We don't probably time to do it here, but you should do it offline. So the same person who made love languages made apology languages and mm-hmm. acknowledging that people feel resolved in different ways. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Also, our relationship changed when I read love language as well. I didn't read the whole thing, but I got into it enough to where I was like, mm, I get it. So I need to, to get into that apology language. There's five apology languages. I only think the three are really different. I think they're trying to keep with the five three theme. <laughs> but like genuinely repenting is important for people. A makeup act might be important mm-hmm. for people. Or for some people, they want someone to take responsibility. Yes. So doing that quiz independently and then being like, hey, I know that you said you're sorry, but what I really need to feel like resolved from an issue, like for me, I am an act of repentance. Mm-hmm. Like if you broke my camera, buy me a new one. I don't care how Period. sorry you are yeah. or how much Period. you intend. Like <laughs> that's not what's going to matter to me. I'm like, do a makeup act. Yeah. Whereas my husband, Jared, is take responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's so much more important for me because I could go out and buy him a new camera. But if I never said that camera meant a lot to you and I was really careless with it. And I really need to do a better job of ensuring that I am careful with your property. Mm -hmm. He's never going to feel good about that new camera. Wow. Um, That's how you are. That's me. hundred percent. Yeah. I'm literally like that. I feel like she's like that with you. Like you're like a, with my new camera. Yeah. Active. Yeah. What what was it? It's like an act. I can't remember the actual term for it. It's like an act of restitution. I think it is, Mm -hmm. but Essentially, it's like a makeup act. Yeah. But I, I'm definitely into the makeup whatever, okay? Cook me dinner. You ain't got to buy me shit. You know what I'm saying? Make me something to eat and apologize. I'm cool. I feel like I'm like that too, but and don't more let me, so. Don't have me have to tell you to do that. Like, can you just mean it? You know what I'm saying? Can you want to do it? For your for for us, I, I I'm curious. I will take this quiz because I'm really curious to hear what the other ones are because I it is about the act to me, but that can get old for me. If you just know to do something to like, oh, I broke this, I'm gonna buy you a new one. Like that wouldn't be enough for me either. I want to know that you're not gonna continue to do those things because it's one thing to well to be yeah. clear, it's not always like a purchasing thing. I mean, doing doing the quiz is important because it could be something where it's like, hey, like. I didn't compliment you on your big day. You know, you came home, you made an incredible speech. I didn't talk about it. For me, it's like acknowledge you didn't talk about it, but what's really gonna make me feel better is the next time I can see that you did the action. Yeah, Or that that same day, 
instead you actually take the time and say, here's what I really thought. Yeah. So if I'm bringing something up, it's because I want to see that action fixed. Yeah. Versus I don't need to feel like down the line or I'm so sorry. Yeah. That to be said, that's kind of an offline thing. I think that acknowledging, you know, how we just did, making mm -hmm. it really small, because sometimes problems can be big, making them as small as possible. Like, here's the next thing I want you to work on for mm -hmm. us. Um, and then also to ensuring the person heard you and feels heard by you. Yeah. And that apology part, you know, kind of to your point about, we already had this discussion hours ago. Why are you still mad? It could be that you didn't speak Easy's particular. TT way of saying this, why do you do that? <laughs> why do you, she said, why do you keep doing that? Why are you doing that? After her saying that, like probably three or four months, cause this shit is not, it's not overnight. It'll never happen. And um, after she kept saying, I was like, yeah, maybe I'm being a little too damn, uh, I got too much resentment. You know what I'm saying? You ain't did nothing to me to make me have that much resentment. Then it sounds like, okay, but just a personal issue with you as in me. Like, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? And it was like, you know what? Nah, I got to get that shit together. Apology mm -hmm. language. Yeah. You apologize. I'm like, I had no idea right. they had the okay. apology language. I think that's a big thing, though, that's with dope. you two. You know that apologies mean a lot to me. And, you know, over the years that you've worked on it so much, but, you know, you got to continue working on it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hard. She's grew up in a family where it's like, all right, we stick together. Anything outside of that, we don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Which is so understandable. You know what I'm saying? That you go as far as saying we don't really care. Not about like we don't really outside. care, but that loyalty and love that I've seen that she has for her family, it's so admirable versus anybody else it's just like okay uh -huh, i get it it's cool so yeah. i feel like with her uh, one thing that i always complain about is like dang like responsibility is like something that you really need to work on and apo being apologetic that's one of my love languages as you can see whenever i do actions like i'm sorry baby what do you need me to do okay uh -huh. what actions do i need to take to yep. show you that i'm sorry you yep. know what i'm saying so yeah. that's a huge thing of my, yep. my love language that i think it would be better and then lastly, I don't know if we want to make time for this, but we actually did get to loosely do this quiz, but I have a quiz, it's called Turn On Triggers People Should Do. Um, yeah. But in essence, it's similar to this. It's like what we're really doing in all of these conversations, just becoming more mindful um, and less an autopilot. Mm -hmm. So I think a big hard place to do that is when it comes to sex. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we're so used to like when it's good, it's good, and it just naturally happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing with turn on triggers is acknowledging that as you become more intertwined and there's less opportunities for that mystery, that you have to be more intentional about making passion mm -hmm. rather than passion being a given. Um, and turn on triggers is a way to address like what makes you feel hot and bothered? And I wanna do that thing to even get you in that space yeah. before I try coming on to you. And interestingly, you both found that you are turned on by the exact same thing from each other yeah that you feel the other person's not giving to you mm -hmm. yeah and that's being desired being desired yeah. you know yeah. in my way i want to feel desired i want you to compliment me tell me i'm sexy every day and like, you know, treat me <laughs> like I'm that, daddy. seriously i don't want to feel like i'm just daddy in the bedroom i want to feel like i'm daddy all day you know mm. not girl stop be quiet like you know what i'm saying it needs to be like all right if i say something It'd be cool. You'd be like, all right, baby, I got you. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Instead of always being argued. You got to act like that and quit twerking. I mean, they're always like. <laughs> it's jokes, okay? No, I'm not going to say that. You're not going to talk to me like that, you know? It's like, all right, not that you're a yes man, but you're somebody that can turn me on in a way to like, all right, I don't have to say something this time, you know? Mm. And let me, let me know that I am desirable and sexy and attractive and fine as fuck, you know? Because sometimes <laughs> it makes me feel yeah, like. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I'm not attractive. Maybe or I gain weight or is it this or I'm constantly, oh, let me take my breath. Like she doesn't compliment me, you know? Yeah. So that would be nice. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for expressing that. I'll definitely work on that more. And it's crazy because I didn't know that that was like such a big thing for you. I know that you've mentioned like a few times, like, oh, you didn't tell me I look good. Like, are you, did you like this outfit? Like, you didn't, but I didn't know that was like as big of a thing for you. Yeah. Um, but now that you're identifying right, that, like I feel like I definitely can take that in and work on that a lot more. Cause there's a lot of times I do look at you and I'll be like, oh, she looks so good over there. And I wouldn't say it cause it might not come now. Girl, how I say it. Both of their eyes though, they always look at each other, not right now, she's looking crazy. They always look at each other like, 
you the sexiest person in the world. So I just knew they was complimenting each other. But sometimes we just not that verbal. It's really to me to say it. But now that I know it would mean something to you, I definitely want to make the like attempts to say those type of things more. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like on my end, I think just like taking more action, like you taking more action. I think when it comes to like verbally telling me how beautiful I am and things like that, that means a lot to me. It makes me feel so confident in this relationship, but it doesn't make me feel desired, you know, right. um, because it doesn't translate to romance and sex and things like that. Like you might be able to tell me, oh, you're so beautiful all the time, but if that doesn't make you want to tear my clothes off or just do some really romantic, sweet things to set the mood, like it almost is just like having a compliment like from my mom. Because my mom tells me I'm beautiful Oof, all the God. time. Too. Oh, she, damn. She I don't mean like in an offensive oh, way, but, but I'm just saying. Just, it feels platonic, not passionate. Yes, platonic, <gasps> not passionate. Do you get it? Am I like a mother to you? No, but... <laughs> No, that's what I'm I. But that's exactly that's a great yeah. way of summarizing. It feels very platonic, not necessarily passion. It's like, wow, she thinks Natalie wants you to pick her ass up, throw her on that bed, and take her down, baby. Oh, I didn't even know y'all was doing the nasty. Well, who knew? Evie even gave us your first time story. Give us your first time. Damn. Thinks I'm beautiful, so I don't care. I'll walk around the house with my hair crazy because I know she's still thinking, thinking I'm beautiful, which. Y'all Disney channeling it out. Ain't even doing it at all. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so great to feel that like confidence in this relationship. But I do want to feel like there's that passion for me as well. Perfect. Is that surprising to you? Did you know that she needed more of that like? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Because that's how I am naturally. And that's how I was in the beginning of the relationship. And because of all these things that we are going through i feel like i've lacked that you know what i'm saying so i i know it i've done it i've seen it i just gotta get back in the groove of everything that we talked about so it can be there you know what i'm saying and that's what i want to do yeah all right well i think this was great this was amazing this was so good thank you so much Shan. thank you for thank sharing you. i think this yeah. was such an eye-opener i learned a lot it was so beautiful to watch two of you communicate uh, yeah. the trick is to do this without a person and right. millions of other people watching. Wow. Because <laughs> whenever we have that, you know, that ideal of like, how are people perceiving me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of what we're talking about too, that comfortability. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this is not a comfortable environment to be in. Yeah. So how do we take this and duplicate it yeah. when we're alone? Yeah, exactly. that's so true. Put in we the should work. always put on a camera. We should start doing that. <laughs> no, but we don't have to post it. But I mean, I wonder if that would be helpful. That'd be hard to, like, to think, think about a, a camera. camera. No, I know, but like, imagine if we're going through something and we're like, dang, we need to talk through this. Maybe it would be beneficial for us to put on a camera to see even like our body language to see how we communicate with each other. Of course, we'll never post it. We could delete it right after watching it. But for educational purposes, that might be helpful for us to see ourselves outside of ourselves. I agree. How we will once we edit this, you know? And we don't like want to perceive ourselves even like as like a nasty type of person like so i'm not going to want to watch back and be like dang look at me not being understanding at all <laughs> so it might make you be more aware i don't know it's a really interesting idea i think that there's some fascination to that because then it, yeah. it does ah, create that level of i still have to impress because it yeah. can get harder when we're in a relationship and again we share so much but I mean, it'd be best to do it if you can just do it for each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, rather than the perception, but you start wherever you need to start. Yeah. But I feel like it would be for each other too. Cause I wouldn't want her to see. Yeah. See how nasty. <laughs> I, I that. do that. Yeah. I, I used to do that. Like if, uh, like it'd be times you'd be doing a YouTube video, you get into it with your girl. Like, look at what she was doing. I mean, you, like, can't you see? <laughs> what i'm talking about what i'm uh, saying like, like and i'm sure you would need to see that too like girl that thing yeah. be on camera it could be something it'd be on camera about, like, you know what i mean try that. Mm -hmm. like i can't post yeah, this because you look talking. too yeah yeah coming up with you don't want to be here that could work for us <laughs> i mean and obviously that would just be like a practice thing it wouldn't be like we would do that all the time but it would might create some type of understanding that we didn't have idea. before and then if you felt like posting it you could Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Because this is educational. It yeah. Is. Yeah. Make sure you guys follow Thank Shan. You. This was amazing. I'm glad you guys were here. Uh, Neezy Gang, we love you guys so much. Give us some comments uh, below. Yes, please. 
Yeah, yeah, I don't want this video to go over an hour and we're already at 59 minutes. So listen, I hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Comment below, like this video, subscribe. Hell yeah.